Hello, this is Mike with Miller Marine Products and today I'm making a video on my strong arm system. I want to explain the strong arm system. I've had a lot of people that are really happy and have bought the strong arm system, but what I find is a lot of people don't understand either what they need to order, or they don't understand quite what the system can do and can't do. Um, there's pretty much not too many things it can't do, but let's go over it, it's so versatile a system that I've actually made this display and mounted it on legs that I made from just stock strong arm parts. So let's go over that and look at what, I, what we've got here. So for example, this is my, um, this is my right angle strong arm mounting base. Um, this is one of the uh, right angle turret mounts. These are some 8 inch extensions. And these are actually tabletop um, mounts. And I just put some rubber feet on them and made this whole display using this strong arm system. So now what I'd like to do is talk about some of the stuff that I have configured and then I do have mounted on here. So one of the things that I want you to know right away is the strong arm system mates up really nice with my rail system, but it doesn't have to be on my rail system. So this four bolt pattern, and this is why I mounted this particular mount, directly to it without being on the rail system um, just to show you that it doesn't have to be mounted to my rail system. So I have pedestal mounts. Here's one of my pedestal mounts, a base mount. And so the, the basic fundamental of this mounting system is, is you start with a mount, either a pedestal mount or uh, this I call it a side mount, but this side mount can be mounted in a lot of different ways. It can be mounted in this direction. It can be mounted on top in any direction and used as an inline kit. Okay, and I'll go into that uh, inline um, a little more in a minute. But what, what's important to note is when you start from a base mount, you start with a threaded pin location and you start with hand knobs so that at the end of the day everything can be removed. So each time that you move up, so let's say we were going to put an extension directly on this as, an, as in an inline kit, you're always going to use the whole pattern that's going to mate up to the side that's got the threads in it. So there's two different ways to make a joint. If you look at these joints here, these are hand knob joints and you'll see the hand knobs in them so that you can move this and adjust it. So this system is adjustable horizontally and vertically when it's used this way and also with the pedestal mount. So every base mount will come with the hand knobs, but the other mounts come standard with just a bolted joint. This is an example of a bolted joint. So rather than the, the threaded hand knob bolts and everything coming through from the threaded side, they come through the whole pattern side and they go into the threads and that's a standard makeup, okay? Not everybody wants to uh, spend the extra money on the hand knobs. Those run an extra $8.75 a piece, except they are included, like I said before, in the base mounts. But if you want to add those hand knobs to each one of these joints, you certainly can. But like in this case, this piece was um, configured to show a lot of people use this exact setup, different size dog bone extensions, but they'll use this exact setup, a tabletop mount, one of my base mounts, right angle base mounts, and they'll mount that to the back of their transom. This comes out and then they use these, they'll use two of them to mount tables to. So that's one use of it. You could put a barbecue on it. There's, there's a million different ways that you can configure this, but you have to keep in mind that each time that you move up, you start with a threaded base, then you go to the hole pattern. The other end of the dog bone has a threaded base and then to a hole pattern. And then the last one always ends up as just a bolt, as just a joint because that's where it terminates. So with that concept in mind, this is like an erector set. There is no limitations to how you can configure this. You can put two of the uh, extensions together. They can run singly. Um, one of the things I wanted to cover, because a lot of people don't know what links they need. So very common is to go with this base mount and this base mount 
Um, I went ahead and just put a table mount on top of it with the right angle turret mount just so that you would get a measurement. So that measurement from the top of the block to the top of here, you're three and a quarter inches and that's before you add any of the extensions. So this is a six inch extension. A six inch extension is actually eight inches long. It's six inches from eye to eye. So I did that so it would be easy for a person to be able to figure out what they needed. So let's say you wanted to come up and then out. You could simply take your tape measure and at eight inches and then let's say you know you wanted to go another eight inches so there's 16 inches. It, it would allow you to figure out what that angle and how long a piece is that you need. Okay, so this part, when it's laid down um, in this configuration, from the top of this block, you're going to be roughly two inches down from the top of this block. So you're going to lose two inches of extension in this format right here where it's sitting this way. But if it's sitting up on top of a surface this way, you're going to gain an inch and a quarter. So these are some of the mounting things and I just wanted to show some of the different configurations. So in this configuration I have a Scotty rod holder that uh, mount on here and um, it's set up on a side mount and you can see this has got a standard bolted joint here. Um, it does have one upgraded joint here and then of course the, the base comes with this hand knob setup. So these are this is one of my brand new products. This is a rod holder. This is a tube style rod holder. And let me grab a, a couple of rods. The tube style rod holder can be used with a spinning reel like this and the spinning reel is not going to rotate. Okay, so that's one use of this. It's a pass through system so the butt of the rod does pass through the tube. Okay, this can also be used with a uh, bait caster reel. When you have the, the little finger uh, little trigger finger on the rod, it will come into this tube and it will index like that and that holds your rod nice and straight. So that works very well for, for that style of rod as well. And the nice thing is, is, is the ability to just quickly change from one system to another. So, so let's say I want to run a Foby rod holder now. I mean simply, all I have to do is take this off. I can put this one on. It's got my Foby rod adapter on. That quick I can go from that rod holder to this style rod holder. Okay, I can also go to, this is my tube rod holder that is designed for a gimbaled butt rod. So what that means is this is not a pass-through rod holder. So, let's see here. I don't know where I set that, so let's just grab a new one. If I was going to go halibut or tuna fishing, I really don't want to use plastic rod holders. So this is a, all aluminum. These are all anodized. It's got a nice rubber liner, just like this one does. This has a nice rubber liner. This is a gimbaled butt rod. So when I say gimbaled butt rod, it's got the, the, uh, the cross down here in the bottom. So what that does is when that's set into this rod holder, it slips in there like that, this rod isn't going to twist. So now if you're going to run those, those electric Tanacom reels or whatever, this is your setup. Reel's not going, you can run your reel here, you can reel in, this is all strong enough to reel the fish right in this holder. Um, you got small children that can't hold the pole on their own, this is a good option. Um, this is a very good rod holder, but as you see, it's not a pass-through butt. It's got that pin in the end that indexes the rod. Okay. So. Now, just as a 
refresher to all the different parts that we have for this system. This is the right angle turret mount and you can see it's used in many different configurations. I've got two pedestal mounts here, both of them have that. So what it does is it turns it from, from this orientation to this one. But it also gives you the 10 degree adjustment. Each one of these joints, whether they be a vertical or a horizontal joint, has 10 degrees of adjustment. The way that you get that 10 degrees of adjustment is there are pin locations and if you look at this part right here, the center pin locations are going to get you every 30 degrees and then these other pin positions always have to be opposite of one another. They will get you every uh, 10 degrees so off of that first position. So if you want to slip it back 10 degrees or go forward 10 degrees, that's that um, adjustment. So this adjustment is finer than any of your plastic rod holders. They are set up at 22 and a half degrees. Even if you put the slip cogs in them, they're still not going to get you 10 degrees of adjustment like this system does. So the other day a guy called and he needed a, he wanted a dual fish finder hit, one for radar and one for a fish finder. And so I have produced this mount. So you can take two, two fish finders and mount on here on their on their um, bases and then each one of these has a UHMW um, piece in here so when you tighten it down it, you can rotate these these are adjustable 360 degrees infinitely adjustable this is still has a 10 degree adjustment I would not have put this together like this but I wanted to do it for this for this video it, I would have just used a bolted joint here because you're not going to be moving that around but I wanted to be able to take this off real quick to show you what you could do is if you're just wanting to mount a single fish finder head you could certainly do that off of this part configured just like this by going this direction here and putting your UHMW bolt in there and just bolting it up solid and then you would still be able to rotate a single head on this so that's the reason why I left that so I could take it off real quick so again to um, we have the flanges that go on the top of the system. The flanges will interchange to a rod holder. We have uh, all kinds of different size extensions. This is a six. Our smallest one is a four. Uh, the four I got built right here has the hand knob, which is, like I said, an upgrade. Um, they do come standard with the bolts to bolt them together as this is done. So this mount is, is just can be used in so many different ways. And, and, and like I said, in this direction, it, it's used like this. And many people will mount my tables this way. So you can make an elbow out of these. Your rod holders, if you want your rod holders up and then out, you can make elbows out of them. There's no limitation to what a person can do with these. On my website, I have them priced as... A side mount kit, which would be a side, this would be a side mount kit right here. I have them priced as with extensions of different sizes. We start with a four inch and then you can upgrade all the way up from there. On the rod holders, the rod holders are not priced with an extension, but on the website you can add an extension to them. They can be bolted up uh, direct. So rather than having a table mount here, this is what a side mount. This is what my rod holder would look like without an extension. Simply, this rod holder would be set up like this. And by the way, all the rod holders have a leash hole for them. So if you're running leashes on your rods, um, there's a spot to hook that leash to it. So this would be your standard rod holder kit that you would buy. And then you can upgrade that rod holder to have, um, and the, with the rod holder kits, we're including this hand knob on these joint, on all joints. So if you were going to add a four inch, you could, six inch, 12 inch, whatever you decide to go with. So as you can see, there's really not too much you can't do with this. So fish finders, barbecues, um, rod extensions, mount fillet and rigging tables. All of this stuff can be done with the strong arm system. The strong arm system is all anodized. All the parts that go to it are anodized. They're all clear uh, type two anodizing. The um, parts are made from three eighths 
6061 T6 structural type aluminum. Very strong stuff. Um, man, I just don't know what else I can say about it. So at this time, I'm going to end this video. Thank you very much for watching.